Hey guys, I'm Isaac. Today we're shooting a video in my own kitchen with my beautiful wife Monique and our roommate Kayla. Um, I'll just sort of show you behind the scenes so you can see what we're working with. All right, so for lighting today, we're just going with a single light setup. So I've got the Aperture 300D Mark II set up here. Even though this can just rest on the floor nicely, I like having it mounted because it just adds a bit of weight. So that way this thing's less likely to fall over if it's moved. Um, for lighting, I've got it on full power and we've got a 50 by 130 centimeter softbox with a grid on it. That way the light hits our talent over here and doesn't hit the background too much because I like the background to be a little bit darker. So the grid sort of stops the uh, microwave and stuff lighting up. Four cameras, our A cams over here, which is an X-T3 with a 35 F2 lens. And this is also the one doing the audio recording. So um, each of the girls are wearing a Rode wireless transmitter. So I have both of them on here with a Saramonic uh, joiner so that the left and right channels get merged together into a single audio source in camera. That way I don't have to sync audio in post. For our B cam, we're using an X-T4 with a 16 to 55, which is what Monique's actually using to record this on. But that's our second camera angle. I'm sort of standing about where Monique is and shooting the shot here from the side. And then our C cam is actually our tabletop cam. So this is another X-T3. And I had the 10 to 24 mil lens on there. And then I'm running a HDMI cable down across over here and to this monitor here. That way the girls can see what's on the table as they're doing so they can make sure their hands are in the right position. The only other thing I've got is I've got the Bluetooth speaker here. So I'm actually plugging this into the HDMI monitor when we're playing back. That way we can all hear the audio at once. Otherwise I'm only getting audio through the headphones. So it's a bit easier when everyone can hear it at once. Hey guys, I feel like I did an okay job of explaining what I did on the weekend with that behind the scenes video, but I didn't do a very good job of explaining why I did some of the things I did. So I just wanted to give a bit more of an explanation on what went on there and uh, give a couple of tips. Uh, my first tip would be to make sure you get a good YouTube thumbnail. So um, what I'll usually do is just when I'm in the middle of shooting, when I've got a good scene set up, usually from the A-cam, is I'll just get the talent to just sit there and smile for a couple of seconds, which sounds kind of awkward, but if they stay still enough, I can easily get a really high quality 4K screen grab from that and use that for the YouTube thumbnail. Now I could switch the camera over into photo mode and take an even higher quality image, but I feel like the settings are already, like the eye exposure is nailed, it's all perfect. So just do that and the quality is more than good enough for a YouTube thumbnail. One other tip I've got, uh, especially when shooting with Fuji using a small HD monitor, is um, to turn on the metadata in the small HD monitor. And what you can do is have a red box appear around the outside of the monitor whenever you're recording. So the reason I do this is because if I turn on HDMI info display, where the camera outputs all its camera settings and stuff over HDMI, um, that's really good. I can see my shutter speed and, and if I'm recording, but the image is really low quality. Like it looks like it's a 480p signal that's output to the back monitor on the Fuji. Um, um, and that's just getting pushed out over HDMI. So it's a 1080p feed technically, but it doesn't look anywhere near as crisp. So when I turn HDMI info display off, it's much crisper. So I don't need to find myself looking down at the bottom screen just to check if I'm recording. I can just stare at the monitor and see exactly what's going on and know that I'm recording. I used a single light source, the Aperture 300D Mark II in the gridded softbox to light this one. Um, I had a lot of ambient light coming in, both through the window to the side of the kitchen, as well as a lot of ambient coming from behind the camera because they've got a lot of big open windows. So I closed all the blinds to try and cut down ambient as much as possible, but the ambient was contributing quite a bit to the exposure. Now I didn't mind that because it sort of meant there was nice soft light rather than really harsh dark shadows wherever my key light wasn't hitting them. But uh, what I didn't realize at the time was the clouds were moving through the sky and so the exposure was actually changing quite a bit. So once I was in post looking at the waveforms, the scenes were getting brighter and darker um, throughout the single take. Um, so that, that wasn't ideal. I think next time I do this, I'll put a bit more um, stuff to block the light uh, through the window. So maybe some garbage bags or maybe some diffusion material, but I just want to sort of control that a bit more in future. That's something somewhere I definitely made a mistake on this one. Because this is a quick low budget shoot, I didn't want to bring out my big slider, my gimbals, my monopods and everything else. I thought I'd just keep it nice and simple and shoot all the B-roll handheld, um, which was great. And it was also a good way to test the IBIS in the X-T4, which I felt like made a big difference. And I feel like I'll be shooting handheld a lot more in future because it's amazing to just handhold on the spot like this, rather than trying to get the gimbal in, especially when you're dealing with a kitchen bench where you've got to get the gimbal up high, especially for quick low budget shoots where it's just amazing and makes my life so much easier. So I shot all this on the X-T3s and the X-T4s at 25 frames a second in UHD 4K. I shot it in 10-bit log and then used the Eternal LUT. Um, what I found, I love the Eternal LUT, the colors are beautiful. But um, the last few YouTube videos I've uploaded, but between the Turner being a bit desaturated anyway, and YouTube seems to desaturate videos a little bit sometimes as well, um, I thought I'd put it, spice it up a little bit this time. So I put plus 30 on the 
saturation and this like really made it pop so that that's going to be my new favorite recipe assuming the lighting's controlled and it's a good exposure another thing i always do when shooting on fuji is generate proxies as soon as i get the files into premiere this means that once i've copied off the footage i've got to sort of wait around for half an hour do something else while it encodes all the h265 into prores 1080p proxies but every time i don't do it i end up getting halfway through editing the sequence and then i realize that just as i'm jumping from clip to clip the computer's just a bit too slow and i find it frustrating frustrating and it makes the whole editing experience so much easier. For this shoot we used three cameras. I think I could definitely do this with one camera. I could still do a shoot like this fine. Um, two cameras would be to would be totally fine. That, that wouldn't bother me at all. Three cameras was really nice. It's not necessary, but it was definitely nice because I could just have the third camera up top for the top down shoot the whole time. And then I could just leave that recording and get heaps of good footage off that without ever having to check it or mount it, take it off and put it back up later and all that. The A cam stayed on the tripod the whole time, so that was set up with both external microphone systems, and that that was it perfectly positioned with the background and everybody where we wanted it. And the B cam was the XT4 with Ibis, and I was just using that for a second camera angle when the girls were talking. And then all the B roll shots were done using that, just me moving my body side to side, trying to get like a slow fake slider look. The only downside to shooting with three cameras I've found is you end up with so much extra footage. So when I'm doing run and gun jobs with one camera, I come home and if I was shooting for an hour, you know, I've got one hour of footage. Whereas with this three camera setup, I find at the end of a one hour shoot, I've got almost three hours of footage to go through. And so like, even though I scrub through it at double speed or triple speed sometimes, to so just pick out the good bits, it definitely takes a lot longer to generate proxies and to just go through and find all the good bits in the first place. Having said that, I will definitely keep shooting three camera setup because having that third camera angle in post just makes such a difference. I feel like my edits are so much nicer or if the B cam isn't, isn't so good, I can just cut down to a top down. I'm loving it. One other tip I've got when you're shooting talking heads especially, but when shooting anything is um, after you've set up the shot and done a test video clip, just to make sure that everything's looking right when you're recording, um, I'll then play it back, watch that. And if it looks good, I'll get the client to come over and check it out before we continue with the whole shoot. Um, I find this really helps me because often I'm shooting women and they might notice a fly away hair or some other distracting clothing item or something that me as a dumb male would never notice, but it really stands out to the girls. So for example, I'd set up in a previous kitchen video Video, a backlight to light up um, the back of Monique's head and I thought it looked really cool because it really separated her from the background but as soon as I showed her the footage she pointed out that it really brought out all the flyaways on one side of her head and so she didn't like that look at all so we ended up shooting just with a single light that time and she was really happy with the results and at the end of the day you want the client happy. In hindsight I, could, I think I had that rear light a little bit too bright so I should have turned it down but the client was really happy not having a rim light and it still looked really amazing without it so always check with your clients make sure they're happy before you shoot the whole video and realize that there's something that they don't like about it thanks for watching guys we've got a couple other videos coming up soon i'm trying not to be too gear focused i want to make it more about filmmaking and photography as well so it's not just a gear review every week um if you've got any suggestions for what you'd like to see in future episodes just leave a comment below i'll reply back to every comment and uh, thanks everybody for subscribing we've got 50 subscribers so far which is 50 more than I was expecting to get after making a couple of videos. I was just wanting to give back after learning so much on YouTube. So thanks so much guys and see you in the next one.